Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, another edition of the Daily Edification Exaltation. Coming to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bar Shem, Yahweh Shai Bar Shem, Rakakwadash. All praises and glories definitely do, especially in these times. So I'm not sure what title I'm going to give this video, but the inspiration for me doing this video uh, comes from this video here that um, Elder Apostle uploaded. And I believe it's uh, he uploaded it from a video GMS Watchman did, which he's a brother from the main camp. He did this video here entitled, O Ye of Little Faith, Barack Kabar. Now, Barack Kabar is the brother on the left. And uh, two things I got to say about Barack Kabar, which Kabar means warrior, and he is fighting. His brother is dealing with a, you know, not to, you know, I'm just going to be very discreet and say that the brother is dealing with a very serious health condition. But uh, he maintains his faith. You know, he's out there every week. You know, he's he's uh, out there every week doing the work. And that takes faith. And that's all you need. You know, the scriptures speak about if you have faith as as the uh, grain of a mustard seed. Let's get that. You know, it's not how eloquent you are. It's not how... How... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? How prolific you are in the truth. It all comes down to a little thing called faith. That's what Yahweh Bar Shem is looking at, faith. Does this guy, does he really believe in me? Does he really believe what he's saying? Yeah. And we got to examine ourselves every day to make sure we are demonstrating that faith before, yeah, not before men, that faith before Yahweh Bar Shem Because you got guys who demonstrate faith before men, but they really don't think about Yahweh Bar Shem you know? Um, let me see here. I think this is the one right here. No, that's not the one I want. Here it is. Something that our Lord said, Yahweh Shai, Matthew 17 and 20. And Yahweh Shai said unto them, he was speaking to his disciples, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, now that's little faith, mustard seed is little, but, you know, that's what the Lord is looking for, faith, just just the belief. There's a scripture where it says, uh, you believe in hope against hope. That's faith, when you believe in hope against hope, okay? Uh, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. So we, we are to remember that, you know? And uh, that's what he goes into, the brother Barack Abar, he goes into, uh, you know, faith. Like I said, he's dealing with his condition and he's still out there doing the work. And, uh, you know, he's a humble brother. So those are the two things I can say about that brother. All right. So now what I'm going to do is play, I'm going to play uh, up to the fourth minute. Cause he made he made a, a a good statement when I heard it. I said, you know what, I can do a video out of it. And hopefully, edify and exhort you brothers out there, because that's that's what we're here to do. We that truly believe in this knowledge, believe in this ministry. Our job is to exhort. Our job is to exhort, and to edify. Let me say that again. Our job is to exhort and edify all right that's what it's all about so without further ado let's get into it um, let me, let me 
let y'all go. I gotta get that in. Alright. Ask the watchman. Foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakam Kadash, double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone, the men that taught me this truth through the Spirit. Peace and blessings to you, brothers, that teach you this word and truth and sincerity, and the rest of the believers and followers of Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, that scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. All right? Now, today I want to go into what are we going to do if we can't buy or sell? Because this question came up during the Hebrew. To Negroes, uh, movie and that's a very good question to ask. A lot of these other Israelite groups, they don't entertain that question. The days are coming when the only way you can buy or sell, according to the prophecy, is if you have that RFID microchip. Those days are fast approaching. <clears throat> it may be starting this year, definitely going into next year. Okay, so that's a, a good question to ask. And what is the answer to that question? Well, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to trust in the Lord. We're going to trust in Yahweh Bashem Yahshai. That's what, that's what we can do. Let me bring in the scripture here. And you're going to hear Barak Abar pretty much say it. Uh, the book of Proverbs, the third chapter. The only thing we can do is trust in the Lord Yahweh Bashem Yahshai. That is why we're getting all this knowledge and information as a matter of fact there is a scripture in the bible where it says uh the things that are written aforetime were written for our learning there were many predicaments our forefathers were in where it seemed like there was no hope but they still believed that's that scripture believing in hope against hope they still believed and guess what they were delivered from their plight so that is a uh What's the word I'm looking for? That is an example for us to believe in. Again, that is that is why it is written. The things that are written aforetime were written for our learning. All right. The book of Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Now, for you to trust in the Lord, you have to know about the Lord. You have to get the information. You have to get the knowledge. How can you trust in the Lord when you don't have the truth, when you don't have the knowledge? You have to learn about the Lord. It starts with learning about our Heavenly Father. You know, learning the secrets of our Heavenly Father. One, one, a big secret of our Heavenly Father is that He controls both sides. So when the chip is made mandatory, that's really the Heavenly Father on the left-hand side. All right, so when you know that, when you know He controls everything, then you, you, you just say to yourself, well, if He controls everything, I'm going to throw uh, myself upon His mercy. You know, peradventure He'll have mercy upon me and deliver me from the plight that he's bringing, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> it's really the, the it's really the heavenly father, Yahweh, on the left hand side, allowing this man to bring forth that chip, which is the hour of temptation, you know, it's really the heavenly father on the left hand side doing it, okay, because he controls both sides, so trust in the Lord with all thine heart, meaning all our mind, and lean not unto thine own understanding. That's the problem for our people. They want to lean unto their own understanding. When they have no understanding. In all thy ways. It didn't say some of our ways. It said in all thy ways. Acknowledge him. Right. Just, I just give you an example. Acknowledging him. What's a good example of that? Acknowledging that he creates both sides. That he controls both sides. Good as well as evil. Job did that. Hey, the first thing Job did when he, when the Lord brought calamity upon Job, the first thing he did was reason within his mind. Well, the Heavenly Father creates both sides. You know, he said that. He said, shall we not receive uh, evil from the Lord as well as good? That's what he told his stupid wife. Because his stupid wife, the first thing she said with her emotional behind, and that's women. That shows you right there, women are, are emotional. They're not rational. They're emotional. They're not, they don't reason with logic, they reason with emotions. So that's that's their big fallacy. The first thing Job's wife did was was reason with her emotions. Well, curse the most high and die. 
<laughs> you know, but Job reasoned within himself, look, the Most High gave me good, shall he not give me evil? Because Job understood that, that our power is a balanced power. He deals with both sides. See? So Job actually did what is written here in Proverbs. He, in, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. When Job started getting that hell, the first thing he did was, he didn't get emotional like his wife. The first thing he did was acknowledge the Heavenly Father, reason within himself. Well, the Heavenly Father gave me good. He gave me all these blessings. So now it's time for him to give me evil. So what should I do? I should just deal with the evil. The same way I, I had no problem with the good. When the Heavenly Father was giving me the good, I had no problem accepting it. Now he's giving me the evil. Let me accept it. Let me bear down as, as hard as it may be. Let me bear down. Let me hunker down and deal with the evil that he's given me. That was the reasoning that Job had. And that, and, that, and that shows you that it's a man that has faith. That's why a woman is a follower. A woman is not a leader. She's a follower. Men are the leaders and women are the followers. Okay? So there you go. So in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. And it's beautiful that all this hell is about to come down because th what that's going to do is separate the men from the boys. The men are the ones that have this faith in Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, rock solid faith. All right, we're going to be separated from, from the boys out there, the ones that don't have no faith. All right, so there you go. So let's get back to Barack Obama. Okay, somebody, somebody asked the question what are we going to do if we can't buy or sell? And the question, the answer is simple. It's trusting to the Lord. That's it. There's nothing you can carnally do to save yourself from not buying or selling from the RFID chip, which is the mark of the beast. Because that's what you're talking about when you're saying, what are we going to do if we can't buy or sell? Because the scriptures say that when the mark of the beast comes, if you don't have that chip, right. you won't be able to make transactions or do transactions, which means sell your product without it. Okay. So what is a servant of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai supposed to do? Is totally trust in the Lord. That's All it. right? Because in the scripture that backs him up is Proverbs the third chapter, the fifth to the sixth verse, among many other scriptures. That's what our forefathers did. I just gave you an example in Job. The first thing they did was trust in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, no matter how bad it got. They all trust in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, and eventually they were delivered. There's no plan of action. There's no going out to the woods. That is the plan of action, to trust in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. <clears throat> That's the ultimate plan of action. But we know what he means. Trying to be a farmer, trying to uh, 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 be sovereign, and have, go into your own land, go back to Israel. None of that uh, 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 will save you. Because it's about the Lord's election. All right? It's all about the elect of the Lord because the scriptures, it's written that his elect will be saved. Yep. A remnant will be saved throughout the four corners of the earth. Okay? Not the yeah, no matter what, to back up Barack Obama, no matter what, the elect are going to be saved. As it is written, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. It's not possible. It cannot deceive the very elect. The elect will be saved. As a matter of fact, Yahweh Shai, pursuant to Matthew 24, when Yahweh Shai comes back, one of the first things he's going to do is deliver his elect from the four corners of the earth. So no matter what, the elect will be saved. It's upon, it's upon the elect that the new kingdom is going to be built. Upon the elect, the, the, the rulership of the elect, starting with Yahweh Shai, which is the head of the elect. All right, so this is a beautiful thing. All right. The Lord said, many are called, but few are chosen. The scriptures speak about he, he only cares for the ones that walk through the straight gate, the ones that walk through the narrow path, while the rest that go through the broad ways are going through ways of destruction. Yep. Okay? So, I don't even know where to start, man, because there's so many scriptures. But we're going we're gonna to go through the Spirit. This is Revelations. Chapter 3, verse 10. Because thou hast kept the words of my patience, I also will keep thee 
from the hour of temptation. So this is the scriptures that comes to mind. What are we going to do if we can't buy or sell? Because you have kept the words of his patience, really, if you could post the camera to the brothers that's doing the work, okay? Because you have kept the word of the Lord's patience, which means the, the word of the Lord's sufferings, okay? Because you sacrificed your time, your desires, and your life for the word of the Lord's sake, for the name of the Lord's sake, he's going to keep you from the hour of temptation. And that's the statement that he made right there. And what backs him up is uh, the book of Psalms, the 91st chapter. Psalms, the 91st chapter, backs him up. That's what inspired me, because I, I was just watching this video. It's my first time seeing it. I didn't even get that far. All right, what just played there. Uh, Psalm, the, but I heard Barack Obama make that statement. I said, man, I got to back this brother up. I gotta back him up. Uh, Psalm 91. And uh you just heard what Barack Obama said, because we made this truth our uh, the staple of our life. The Heavenly Father is gonna protect us. No matter what we, we're about to face, he's gonna protect us. And even let's say, even if a brother's grabbed up and they put you your head in a guillotine, even at that very moment, the Heavenly Father is gonna give you the spirit if you have to die. He's going to give you the spirit to die manfully. There's such a thing as dying manfully. And we understand death. Death is nothing but a transition. Energy is never lost. It's just transferred. The energy in our body is transferred to the spirit world. That is that is death. You know, Esau is the one that's afraid of death. Esau is the goat. We're the sheep, man. And like I said, I always tell you, brothers, a long time ago, in, uh, when I was living in St. Lucia, I saw them kill a goat. And the sheep, they usually did it around so-called Christmas time. That was like a custom on the on the island. And I'll never forget it. I was a little boy, and the sheep made no noise. The sheep died quiet. It's a hell of a thing, man, to watch the sheep. They didn't resist. They just died quietly. But the goat, oh, my goodness, man. The goat made some blood-curdling sounds. <laughs> the goat made all kind of noise. And then finally they kill the goat, you know? <laughs> so that's that's the difference, man. We're the sheep and Esau is the goat. Esau is afraid of death. And, and they got good reason to be afraid of death because once they die, where do they go? They go right before the judgment <laughs> throne of a so-called black man. <laughs> so they got good reason to be afraid, the damn devils. <coughs> <coughs> anyway. Psalm, the 91st chapter, let's get into it. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, that's this knowledge, this truth, that's where we dwell, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So if you abide under the shadow of the Almighty, what is that? That's protection, man. You protect it. I will say of the Lord. Now, by the way, this is David who said this, Psalm 91. This is Psalm of David. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. What's, what's a refuge? That's a place that you go to for protection, for, for sanctuary, for shelter. He is my refuge. And for you to say that, brothers, for you to say that, the few sisters that watch these videos, for you to say that, that means you would have to know about the Heavenly Father. You can't say he's your refuge, he's your fortress, if you don't know about him. That would be called blind faith. Our faith is not blind. There's such a thing as blind faith. No, our faith is totally reasonable. Okay, because we understand the power that we serve. Why do we understand the power that we serve? Because we know him. Why do we know him? Because he revealed himself unto us through these scriptures. You see? So, <clears throat> I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress my power in him will I trust. Because we know him. He revealed himself unto us. Beginning with his name and his son's name. That's where it starts. Surely, uh, surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. Now what's the main snare that the fowler, who's the fowler by the way? Esau. A, a fowler is someone who sets traps for birds. Look up the term fowler. So Esau is setting that trap. First of all, the trap begins with this 
COVID-19 nonsense. That's the trap. Then they get us to wear these stupid masks on our face. All right. You go into certain stores, you must wear a mask. Right. That's the trap. That's the beginning of the trap because the mask is going to lead to the to mandatory vaccination. Like you have to mandatorily wear a mask. They're even thinking of passing laws to make it totally man- mandatory to have a mask on your face. That's the trap. That's the fowler. That's the snare. Okay. He saw the fowler. So it starts with the mask. And then after that, you have to forcefully be vaccinated. Then ultimately you get what? The chip. You see, that's the snare of the fowler. So eventually the Lord, Yahweh Barshim Yahushai, will deliver us from the snare of the fowler. Let's read it again. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. So what, what's that, the noisome pestilence? That's the nuclear missiles. And how are we going to be delivered from that? Well, that's where Yahweh Shai comes in. You know, Yahweh Shai and the chariots, where he takes up, tell, well, First Thessalonians, let's read it. First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, the 17th verse. See? Uh, 4 and 17, let's read that. It says, well, let's start at 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of the heavenly father, and the dead in Yahweh Shai shall rise first. <clears throat> Those are the brothers that died in this truth. Well, there you go. A brother, if they if they should put your head in the guillotine, you die in this truth. You're going to be one of the first brothers to, to well, let me say we. I don't know what awaits, awaits me. I don't know if that would be my fate. I don't know. But we would be, uh, that's why I'll say we, we would be uh, the first, some of the first brothers to be on the chariot. All right? So that would be an honorable death if, if that is what we have, if that is what we're going to face. Right? Uh, 17 verse, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Now those clouds are the chariots that the Lord is coming with. So we're going to be taken up, abducted, if you will. Just like Yahweh Shai himself was abducted. Acts the first chapter. All right. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort, comfort one another with these words. So those are words of comfort. So again, when, when you read Psalm 91 and 3, surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. And so now you know how you would be delivered from the noisome pestilence, which is those nuclear missiles. Okay? So pretty much the, uh, you know, it goes on in the psalm, but here's the point. Because thou has made, <clears throat> now this is backing up what Barak Abbas said, because thou has made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. Now, how did we do that? By constantly being involved with this ministry, by constantly studying and researching and doing videos and going out there on the street and teach. We have made the Most High our habitation, just like the scripture says. So because of that, let's read it again, Psalm 91 and 9, because thou has made the Lord, because thou has made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee. See? Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, even the plague of the missiles, because the missiles itself is a plague. The plague of uh, the, the, so, the so-called uh, RFID chip, you know? Uh, yeah, even the phone had to chime on that one. For he shall give his angels charge over thee. So in those days, man, when, when it, you so make the chip mandatory by or sell, just like the prophecy says, the Lord will give his angels charge over us. Some way, somehow, <clears throat> we'll be protected. Who's to say that if they grab you up and they bring you to a detention center and about, about to put your head in that guillotine, who's to say at that very moment an angel can't deliver you? Who's to say? All right, we, we just have to wait and see how the Heavenly Father is going to play out the game. All right, but we know, we believe in the scripture. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague 
come nigh thy dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Why is that? Because we made the Heavenly Father our habitation. See, the Heavenly Father, as it is written, he's not unrighteous to forget our labor of love. All right, because we invested time in the Heavenly Father, because we sacrificed everything, and I do mean everything, for the ministry of the Heavenly Father, we will be amply rewarded. Absolutely, brothers. We have to believe that. That's where that grain of mustard seed of faith comes in. You have to believe it. We have to believe it. Okay? The scriptures don't lie. All right? And then that's what Barack Obama was going into. Let's listen some more, and then I'm going to end the video. The scriptures speak about we are going to be preserved from famine. The scriptures talk about we're going to be delivered from death. So what makes you think you ain't going to be protected during the hour of temptation? Which is when the mark of the beast get implemented and you can't buy or sell without the radio frequency identification chip. Especially if we have made the Heavenly Father our habitation. If we have made him our habitation, we are going to be amply rewarded. And how do we make him our hab habitation? By constantly being involved in this ministry in whatever aspect whether it's teaching out on the street or doing these videos, or both. Just, this is our life, so we're going to be rewarded. Okay. So All right, so with that, I'm going to end it there. The point has been made, so on to the next video. Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel.